let's have a look at drawing tree diagrams and calculating probabilities from them. So a couple of key ideas. All of the probabilities have to add up to one. Um, and I also want to think about the order in which decisions are made. So think about getting up in the morning. The alarm goes off and the first thing I need to decide is am I going to get up straight away or am I going to press the snooze button? Okay, and maybe there is a 70% chance that I get up. So because all the probabilities have to add up to 1, 0.7, take, from, um, take that away from 1, leaves me with 0.3, or 30% and 70%. So that's my first decision that I needed to make. Once I've decided what to do with that, then I need to think about another decision I'd make after that, is what am I going to have for breakfast? So am I going to have um, toast or am I going to have cereal? Um, and I can have both of those options. The probabilities might be different depending on whether I hit snooze or whether I get up straight away, but both of those are options. So that's my layer of my tree diagram, is it's the order in which I make decisions. So let's have a look at this one. So I've given you the diagram to get you started. So the first op first decision you need to, that the student makes is, am I going to walk to school or am I not going to walk to school? Okay. The second decision um, or event that happens is either they are on time or they are late. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to read through and get some information now. I've been told there are 140 students out going um, that we had a survey done. From the 88 students who walk regularly to school, so we're talking about walking to school, and there are 88 out of the 140 students that walk to school. Now if I, do, I know that the probabilities add up to one, or in this case the totals have to add up to 140, so if I do 140 take away the 88, that will give me the number of students that did not walk to school and that is 52 so there are 52 students out of the 140 students who did not walk to school then I'm told from those 88 students 56 got to school on time so us on school on time so we've got 56 out of that 88 that got to school on time so I know there are 88 in that category um, that walked to school, sorry, and there are 56 of them that were on time. So if I do 88 minus 56, that tells me that there are 32 students out of the 88 who walked, there's 32 of them who were late. Okay, from the students who get to school in a different way, so from those that don't walk. 14 were late, so 14 out of, and there are 52 students in this category. So now I'm also going to do 52 minus 14 to get the number that are not walking to school but were on time, and there are 38 out of those. So that probability of being on time if you didn't walk is 38 out of 52. Okay. What I want to do now is I want to finish setting up the diagram. So I need to look at all the combinations. So one combination would be being on time to school and walking to school. So I'm going to say probability um, of walking and being on time. Now notice my words when I use that I said being on wait, um, walking to school and being on time. So that's talking about this and this. And in probability, and means times. So I want to do my 88 out of 140 times, being on time, is 56 out of 88. And I'm going to put that into my calculator. And that gives me a probability of 2 out of 5. Now the next combination is walking to school and being late to school. So I want the probability of walking and being late. And so, remember, and again, I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to take the 88 out of 140 times 32 out of the 88. And that is going to give me 
um, eight out of 35. Next, I wanna look at not walking to school, but being on time. So that combination. So I'm gonna say walk, not walking and being on time is 52 out of 140 times 38 out of 52 which gives me 19 out of 70. The last combination is not walking and being late to school. So now I can say the probability of not walking and being late is 52 out of 140 times 14 out of 52 and that gives me 1 over 10. So that is my tree diagram. Now that I've got that completely set up, now I can look at the probability. So the first one, what's the probability that a student selected at random? So a student selected at random, so that's from all of the students. who And they walked to school, walked to school and was on time. So I'm looking for walking and being on time, which is that particular combination there. So then we can say, the probability they walked and were on time is 2 out of 5. Okay, let's look, have a look at another question. So I've just copied the tr whole tree diagram across here. And the question is, what's the probability that a student selected at random was late? So I need to look at all my different combinations and say, right, from those four combinations, which of those involved being late? So the first one, walk and on time, doesn't include it. The next one, walk and being late, that does include it. The next one, not walking, being on time, doesn't include. Not walking, being late, that does include. So that means the probability of being late, either they walked and were late, or they did not walk and were late. And remember, or in probability means to add. So we're going to do walking and being late is 8 out of 35, plus not walking and being late is 1 out of 10. Let's add those together, and that gives us 23 out of 70. Now, if you would rather show that as a decimal, you're more than welcome. So you could have written the answer as 0 0.32861 to four decimal places. Or if you prefer it as a percentage, 32.86% to 2dp. Okay, any of those are fine. So when we talk about a probability, it could be decimal, fraction, or percentage. Let's have a look at the next question. What's the probability that a randomly selected student, so I'm still talking about from all students, either walked or was on time? So we need to look at our different combinations here and see which ones talk about either walking or being on time or both. Now this is an implied and when we use the or, it could mean one or both. Okay, so the first one, walking on time, that was both, so I'm going to include that. The next one, walking and being late, well one of the options is to walk, so that is included. The next one, not walking and on time. Yep, so that's our on time, that's included. And the last one, not walking and late. No, neither of those options meet our criteria. So or means I'm gonna add them together. So I'm gonna do the probability of walking and being on time, plus the probability of walking and being late, plus the probability of not walking and being on time. And so I'm gonna add two over five, plus eight out of 35, plus 19 out of 70, and that will give me an answer of 9 out of 10, or 0 0.9, or 90% any of those. Now that's not the only way I could have done it, because the other way I could have done it and said, well, in order to get those three, one, two, three probabilities, I know that all four of the probabilities have to add up to one, so I could have also said one minus the probability of the one I don't want, and one minus one over 10 would also give me nine over 10, or 0 
So there's two ways that we could have done that to get to the correct answer. Let's have a look at this one. What's the probability that a student who walked to school? Okay, this tells me it's a conditional probability, a student who walked to school. I know they walked to school, I've seen them walking to school. What is the chance that they were on time? So I will know what's the probability of being on time given that they walked. So I'm only interested in this part of the table. Okay, I know that they walked to school. From there, the chance of being on time is 56 out of 88. And that's the answer. The next one, what is the probability that a student didn't walk to school given, that's another word for conditional, given they were late? So I know that they were late, so I need to work out well, what is the chance that they were late. And from my different combinations there, the first one, oh, that is walking in on time. The next one, walking in late, not walking on time, walking, not walking in late. So there are two options there that can give me the late. So that's my 8 out of 35 plus 1 over 10, which um, we've found is 23 out of 70. And now I, know what, I want to know what's the probability that they did not walk to school given that they were late. So I need to find the probability of not walking and being late divided by the probability of late. So I found my probability of late, which is 23 out of 17. And now I need to do my probability of not walking and being late. That's this one here of 1 over 10. So now I need to put that into my calculator. Um, oh, 7 out of 23, or if you prefer that as a decimal, 0 0.3043 to 4 dp. Okay, so there's our answer to that conditional probability. Then, if we have 580 students at OSC, how many would you expect, here's a key word, to get to school on time? So as soon as I see that word expect, I'm thinking E equals N times P. Where N is my sample size or number of trials, and P is my probability. And in this case, we want to find what's the probability of being on time to school. So when we look at our different combinations here, which ones meet the criteria? So walk and on time, yes. Walk and being late, no. Not walking, being on time, yes. Not walking late, no. So then my probability of being on time is either I walked and was on time, or I did not walk but was on time. So I'm going to add those probabilities together, which is our 2 out of 5 plus 19 out of 17. And that will give me an answer of, it gives us 47 out of 17. Or if you want that as a decimal, 0 0.6714. So now that I've got my probability, now I can work out my expected value, which is E equals N times P. N is my sample size, and I've got 580 students, multiplied by that probability of 47 out of 70, and that will give me a value of 389.43. Um, now let's just think what we've just found. We've been looking at how many students we expect to be at school on time. So we're expecting 389.43 students to be on time. But I can't have 0.4 of a student. So this needs to be rounded either to 389 or 390 students. And there we go. Last but not least, let's look at what we could do for an excellence. The chance that a student who arrived at school and on time so arrived at school on time and was on time to class is 92%. So I'm adding more information. So first of all, I've got the walking and not walking. Then I've got my on time or late to school. What I now am adding on is whether they, if they are on time, 
to school, are they going to be on time to class? Or are they going to be late to class? Now, I know anybody who's late to school, they're definitely going to be late to class as well. So I don't need to worry about adding that on. Um, but they could either walk and be on time to school and then be on time to class, or they could be on time to school but late to class. Okay, and we're told that the chance that they were on time to class is 92%. Okay, so that means 92% there and 92% there. And remember, on time or late to class has to add up to 100%. So that means that's going to be 8% or 0 0.08. So there's a 0 0.08 chance of being late to class that way. And if you're late to school, you're definitely late to class. That's 100% um, on both of those. Okay. Now I've got that far. Look at the question. What is the probability that a student who walked to school arrived on time to school and to class? So we're talking about a student who walked to school. So I know that they walked to school. Okay. So I'm looking at the chance that they are... Um, on time to class given they walked. All right, so being on time to school for that category there is 56 out of 88, and we've also got our 0.92, 92% chance that they were on time to class. So that probability is going to be 56 out of 88 times 0 0.92, which gives us an answer of 0 0.5855 to four decimal places.